Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from ASUS. This is the ASUS GeForce GTX 760 DirectCU 2OC. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box. This uh, video card of course features the GeForce GTX 760 GPU uh, that is based on the GK104 uh, 28 nanometer Kepler microarchitecture uh, from NVIDIA. And uh, in case you wanted to compare this to the 600 series, yes, the GK104 is the same GPU that was used in the GeForce GTX 680 from last gen. So it's a pretty substantial card that you're getting with the 760 for a quite reasonable price point. If you're interested in that, you can go ahead and click the link down in the description below. This is a custom design card, uh, so you have the Direct CU2 cooling solution, which has a direct copper contact for 20% cooler and vastly quieter performance as compared to the reference design card, and I will be showing you a comparison of those. Uh, apart from that, this is an overclock card, so the uh, reference clocks on the 760 is 980 base clock and 1033 boost clock. This one is overclocked, so it has a 1006 megahertz base clock and a 1072 megahertz boost clock. You also get two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, the clocks at 6008 megahertz effectively. Direct power, more on that in just a moment. Also, super alloy power, that's uh, referring to the components, the caps, chokes, and MOSFETs that they've used for power delivery to the GPU, uh, particularly if you're going to be overclocking. That is very nice to have. Apart from that, this is Windows 8 ready, and ASUS has done some work to make sure that if you're doing the proper UEFI Windows 8 installation, that this card is going to be directly compatible with that uh, to provide the fastest boot times possible. Uh, also for, uh, oh, I already mentioned the memory, 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, uh, and you also get uh, access to a lot of the features that NVIDIA has introduced with the 600 and 70, 700 series, such as TXAA and FXAA support, as well as with the 700 series GPU Boost 2.0, which automatically uh, boosts or overclocks your GPU's frequency uh, based on, uh, with, with version 2.0, based on a temperature target. Um, and you can use the GPU t tweak software from ASUS to adjust those parameters. Uh, you also get a three-year limited warranty from ASUS for this particular card. And then uh, the direct CU2 cooling, uh, the direct power and super alloy power. So direct power is an analog power uh, solution, but uh, they basically developed a shunt uh, mechanism to help d deliver that power directly to the GPU uh, by actually going outside the power plane of the PCB itself. So that's kind of cool, kind of a unique design. Uh, finally, on the bottom here, and I know this text is very small, but it's located right over there. We have recommended system requirements, so you're going to want uh, 2 gigs of system memory, uh, everything else listed off right there. I did want to point out uh, for power, you're going to want a minimum 500 watt power supply with a minimum 12 volt current rating of 38 amps, and uh, I often recommend going a bit beyond that just to make sure you have some overclocking headroom or headroom to add additional components in the future. Taking a look inside the retail box, we're going to have some accessories. Um, we have, okay, we've already taken this out of the box, so normally it would be in that... Uh, protective electrostatic bag, but it's not. Okay, uh, apart from that, we have a power adapter right here. So this is going to take a couple six-pin uh, PEG or PCI Express graphics power connectors from your power supply and convert it into a single eight-pin, uh, just in case you don't have the proper eight-pin power connector. Again, 500-watt power supply at minimum recommended for this particular card. The card itself is right here, and it's already out of the bag, but uh, we're going to come back to that in just a moment to give you guys a close-up look. And apart from that, uh, we just have a bit of documentation. So the ASUS speed setup, which will walk you through some basic graphics card installation. And you also get the driver as well as GPU tweak software on this disk. Uh, but of course, you can also head over to the ASUS website to download, it, download the latest versions uh, of GPU tweak. And uh, the NVIDIA website is often a great place to download the latest uh, GPU drivers. All right, guys, now we're taking a closer look at the GeForce GTX 760 DirectCU 2 OC itself, and you'll notice I have two cards here now. Uh, the one here on your left is the reference design GTX 760 from NVIDIA, and uh, one thing that ASUS has done, or I should say two things, uh, is completely do a custom design for this card. Not just the cooler, the cooling solution up here on top, but also the PCB there on the bottom. So if I flip these over, you should notice a fairly substantial difference uh, when it comes to the layout. Well, not incredibly substantial, but uh, ASUS has redesigned uh, all the layouts here. Uh, and they've also gone again with that direct power. So here you can see that shunt uh, that they've integrated here. Again, that's uh, going outside the power plane of the PCB itself to deliver power directly to the uh, GPU, 
when it most needs it, particularly when you're in uh, situations when you're gaming, when suddenly the GPU might call for a lot of energy or a lot of power uh, that's going to be able to provide that. Um, now, another cool thing which I was noticing uh, is size. Uh, this card, the reference card, is a, a little bit longer than nine and a half inches um, measured from the bracket here to the end of the card. And uh, let me give you guys a quick measurement here of the Asus version. They've actually uh, gone a little bit taller on the card, but that's usually not a concern. In most cases, you're not going to have a conflict with the graphics card height. Um, but uh, you'll notice the length of the card itself there just about eight and a half inches. So they shaved off a little bit more than a, an inch. So that's going to help with compatibility in a lot of uh, especially smaller form factor cases. And um, just kind of kind of a nice thing to have, a, a smaller, more compact card. Uh, and also, it's an overclock card, um, again, as compared to the reference design. Now, uh, the, the design of the uh, cooler itself, again, this is the Direct CU2 cooler. Uh, so the two indicates the design where they've uh, integrated two cooling fans. That's, those are going to push air down over the aluminum fin stack, which you can see there beneath them. A substan substantial one. It runs the entire length of the card and actually wraps around and uh, goes even beyond the length of the PCB there at the end. So um, it is going to be ejecting that air as it's pushed across those fins out the back as well as a little bit out the sides and um, this side of the card as well. But bear in mind, uh, you will want to make sure that you have some airflow going through your case uh, to help evacuate some of that warm air as it's ejected by the card. Now, uh, another thing, since uh, this is a direct CU2 uh, cooler, is, well, you have direct copper contact. So you have four heat pipes integrated there, a couple 6 millimeter and a couple 8 millimeter heat pipes where they are going in right there. They are actually making direct contact with the GPU, uh, and that is just going to help more efficiently transfer the heats through the heat pipes out to the fin arrays where it can cool that off. Uh, and also the downward firing air from the fans is also going to cool off the power delivery components from the super alloy power um, which are integrated down there. Now um, you might also see for the super alloy power you got another heat sink right there that's uh, directly connected to the motherboard. I'm sorry, to the, uh, the PCB of this graphics card. And then uh, if you ever did need to remove this uh, unit, you only have to remove these four Phillips head screws right there. And that is all that's uh, holding it physically to the board, although it's still nice and sturdy. And that will allow you to pop that off if you wanted to go with an alternate cooling solution like a water block for some reason, or if you just needed to clean it out in the future, which I always find very, very convenient. Um, also here, you'll have your 8-pin uh, PCI Express graphics connector. So again, make sure you connect that up either directly from your uh, power supply or you can use that adapter if you don't have an 8-pin available. And uh, just in case you're wondering, an 8-pin delivers the exact same amount of power as two 6-pin uh, power connectors. Apart from that, uh, you'll notice uh, a black PCB in here keeping the color scheme in line, uh, black and red overall. You can see some of the, uh, the uh, GDDR5 RAM modules as well for the two gigabytes of GDDR, GDDR5 memory. You got a couple SLI fingers down there. Let me pop the covers off of those. This card is compatible with two, three, and four-way SLI configurations, so uh, by way, of course, of those connection points. PCI Express Gen 3, which provides uh, about double the bandwidth of PCI Express Gen 2. Video cards are not saturating that bandwidth, however. So again, uh, if you are upgrading this card and you're on an older platform that only has PCI Express Gen 2 or 2.1, you're still going to get just about the max performance out of this card. It's going to be maybe a percentage point or two slower, but uh, don't worry, it is backwards compatible. And uh, that just about wraps it up for a look at the card uh, externally. And uh, I will finish off with our video outs here at the back. You do have four of those. You can use all four of them at the same time, so you can connect up to four monitors. You can use three of them for gaming. Uh, and then uh, over here on the right side, you got a couple dual link DVI connectors. The lower one here is DVI and VGA, so it's got your analog connection points. So if you're going to use an adapter, use it for the lower plug. The upper plug here is digital only, but both of those will support higher resolutions, such as 2560 by 1600 or 2560 by 1440. You also have an HDMI 1.4 and DisplayPort 1.2 output. And now for just a real quick uh, demonstration, I have installed the GTX 760 into our Newegg TV testbed, which features also an Asus Rampage 4 Formula motherboard. Uh, just to give you guys a look, first off, at the diagnostic LEDs for PCI Express Power, which I've always thought uh, was, was quite handy. So you may notice right in here a small green LCD. Uh, that will turn green when the power is connected properly. And if you'll notice when I unplug the power, it turns red. So a really easy way to spot uh, whether or not you have uh, 
plugged in your PCI Express uh, graphics power connectors, uh, but also um, you know, if your power supply isn't giving enough juice or that sort of thing, that will also provide a little bit of functionality. Uh, that's the only light up LEDs on the card itself. Uh, let me just go ahead and power the system on. And uh, you guys can also get a quick look at the card installed right there with the fan spinning, which they will no doubt do there, just like that. All right, so there's a, a look at the Asus GeForce GTX 760 Direct CU2 OC in action. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the Asus GeForce GTX 760 Direct CU2 OC, the overclock and custom de designed version of NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 760. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you can click the like button that's right down there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Newegg TV for additional tech videos, and we'll see you all next time.